Transition Tuesday. I'm Jane. This is Joe. Today we're talking about hidden disabilities and social graces. So he's sleepy. So when Joe was a baby and before we knew the level of his disability, um, he was such a cute baby. And people would come up and say, oh, he's so cute. He looks sleepy. He's so sleepy. He wasn't actually sleepy. It's just that Joe's challenges, the brain damage that resulted from his um, prematurity, he was a preemie, um, had caused him to, you know, uh, he didn't make eye contact with people. And, you know, there were things that I noticed as mom that eventually were explained by, you know, the CP, the cerebral palsy, and the seizure disorder, and all those things. But before we knew that, Joe's disabilities were hidden disabilities. A lot of people deal with hidden disabilities. In fact, 25% um, of our U.S. population has some kind of disability. Now, they may not disclose it, and that's 25% that we know about. Um, a lot of uh, people um, with disabilities um, don't disclose it. They don't want a diagnosis, so it's... Uh, you know, we, we only know about 25%. So there's a lot of us walking around that are dealing with challenges. Some examples are ADHD, um, anxiety disorders, chronic pain, um, depression, uh, dyslexia and other learning disability uh, issues, fibromyalgia arthritis, Alzheimer's, um, all kinds of uh, like Crohn's disease, bipolar, multiple sclerosis, um, and uh, deafness. So I bet you know at least one person who deals with some of those issues. And maybe they've told you about them and that's why you know um, but uh, they're hidden. They're hidden disabilities. People with invisible disabilities um, face challenges with family, with workplace and school, and social situations. Um, you know, people with anxiety disorders, like, oh, come to my party. Maybe not. But I don't want to tell you why. It's personal. Every person with a disability experiences it in their own way. Um, you've heard me say this before. Just because you know one person who's autistic, you know one person who's autistic. It's different for every person. If you know, but there's only one Joe. CP in Joe looks different. Uh, CP... Uh, looks one way in Joe, looks different in another person. Here's the thing. You know, like I know so many young people who, college age people who have a hidden disability or invisible disability. They don't want to disclose it at the workplace. They don't want to disclose it when they're dating. They don't want to disclose it at their college or university. Um, and, you know, you find your way around. Um, some of the challenges that people face are fear of contempt from able-bodied peers. Oh, we can't ever do blah, blah, blah because so-and-so can't do it. Or they don't understand. You know, people who have chronic pain... Their lives are very impacted by their pain. And if you don't have chronic pain, you cannot relate. You just can't. So uh, people tend to be like, well, just 
exercise more or try this medicine. Well, sometimes they have and it didn't work. And, you know, that's depressing. And so you kind of go into this spiral, downward spiral. Um, hiding causes anxiety. That downward spiral I was just talking about. Don't assume. Um, you know, see somebody in a wheelchair. Don't assume that they can't speak or they can't, their, their IQ is below normal or, you know, um, you know, it's, it's about each individual person and what their abilities are. When someone discloses, this is an act of courage courageous heroes out there invisible people with disabilities and people with invisible disabilities and invisible people who don't get noticed and just live in the background they are heroes <clears throat> believe them when they say that something is hard for them or they can't do it just believe them or if they disclose to you that they have a disability just believe them be patient if someone can't understand something that you just said, because maybe they have undisclosed hearing loss, just say it again. Or if they don't seem to comprehend the way you're explaining it, try explaining it again. Be patient. Take a deep breath. It'll be worth the effort. Ask, what can I do to help you? You would do that anyway with an older person or, or with a little child. Offer assistance if it's accepted. If they say, yes, I cannot get this bottle top open or yes, I need someone to hold the door for me. So, I mean, offer assistance. If they say no, they got it, that's good. If they say yes, you'll, you'll feel better. You did something nice for somebody. Hey, Normie. <laughs> Keep working at it. Social skills, practice your social skills. It'll be okay. You know, the world will be a better place if we all learn how to help each other, whether we have invisible disabilities or not. If you want to know more about invisible disabilities, go to accessibility.com or just Google. Like if you meet somebody who says they have fibromyalgia or bipolar disorder, just Google it, just learn about it. And, um, you know, be patient with yourself. Be patient with the person that maybe you're struggling to understand. It'll be worth it. Right, Joe? <clears throat> See you next time. <laughs>